opportunity to see some of the work that are displayed out there which are quite promising and I believe we have a big room to commercialize some of the findings that we have had. But more important, to have an opportunity to thank the people of Sweden and the government of Sweden whose support through SIDA has made this occasion possible and has supported quite a number of research efforts. I just want to say to the Swedish people, and I know they know the language, taxomike. The relationship between Sweden and Tanzania started a long time ago. Actually, it started before the independence of Tanzania. By that time, Walim Nyerere reached out uh, to some of the Swedish politicians and forged very close relationship. Sweden supported our effort to be independent and they had some common views on how to run affairs and that relationship has lasted to date. It has been getting stronger and stronger over time. We are very proud of this kind of relationship and we really, I really want to use this occasion as a minister now to say thank you to Sweden for the support that you afford Tanzania and in particular for the support that you afford Tanzania in areas of academic, research and scholarship. And some of you may not know, a number of Tanzanians have studied in Sweden and generally all of them, after their studies, they'll come back to contribute in national building. It's quite unique character of Tanzanians compared to many other beneficiaries of such scholarship. I personally I enjoyed the support of SIDA. I got a scholarship to pursue my PhD at Yotebori uh, University or Gothenburg University. Save for the cold weather and dark hours during winter, everything in Sweden was perfect during my stay there. So I retain extremely fond memory of my time I spent in Sweden. There are so many and this is not the time to share with you. But I also admire the Swedish sensibilities on issues of socio-economic development, something that somehow I personally think most of us should try to emulate. I am extremely happy for the collaboration that exists between ARU and SIDA and I'm very happy to hear that there is a new face that is in the offing to continue this collaboration. I believe this was made possible by very good work that all researchers have, have done and also the organizing committee and the overall management of RD University. Otherwise, when you have this kind of collaboration and the relationship becomes a little bit difficult and people don't deliver, then the relationship tends to fizzle out. So congratulations to all of you for making this possible. As I said, I am one of the beneficiaries of uh, Swedish scholarship. Uh, I spent my time there, I did my PhD. Quite a, an exposure that was very useful coming back here for national building. There was a thinking then uh, among quite a number of, of uh, friends out there that since we have trained some people, maybe now is the time that they just study at their own home. That people who are at Arby University or Dodoma University and so on can do their first degree and do their masters and their PhD right here in Tanzania. We think university education has to be an international endeavor. Apart from the fact that going abroad will help us to see how other people organize their lives and how they conduct their academic affairs. It also minimizes the inbreeding that can actually drag us down to an average that we don't want. So we really want to continue to reach out to other universities across the country, send our people there to study so that they will come back and share with us the knowledge that they get there. They will welcome those 
who want to come to Tanzania to pursue their studies. So my message uh, to our friends, especially in Sweden, we still need to send our people to study in Sweden. So I look forward to the next phase, uh, Mr. Vice Chancellor, where we'll see a number of staff here going to do their PhD in Sweden and come back here to teach and work with the government and the people of Tanzania. We as a government, we are committed to make sure that more Tanzanians go abroad to study. And we are not just going to say this rhetorically. We are going to put money in the budget, in this budget, coming budget, to make sure that we offer scholarship by the government. First of all, to the best students who do extremely well in science at Form 6. If we agree with the parents and we think the kids can cope going abroad, we are going to send them abroad to get their first degree at the best universities across the globe. And that will be in science subjects, medicine. So PCM, PCB are the areas that you are going to study. And it's actually in the election manifesto that was used for campaigning during the last election. We are going also to set aside funding to make sure that the best students in our universities, in areas of science and medicine. If somebody, we had a professor from Eritrea who was teaching at the university, and every time they say, when is he leaving? Why will he leave? <laughs> All we need to know is, is he continuing to publish? Is he good? Is he supervising? And this guy, we got him, and he kept on wanted him to go there, but he loved it in Tanzania. He said, I want to stay in Tanzania. But it was so hard to keep asking for permission for him to work. He's here to teach Tanzanians. This mentality, we have to get rid of it. We have to internationalize. We have to do more relationship. Uh, I'm from economics department at the University of Dar es Salaam. And before I was appointed deputy permanent secretary, I was the chairman of an academic board of MOA in economics, teaching in sub-Saharan Africa. I was elected in uh, Kragana. We pulled together students, and we used to invite professors from Ibadan, from Zimbabwe, and come and teach at the university of, 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 in the department. And students love it to see different people teaching and from Nairobi to come and teach. And we have to continue to do the same. We cannot close in. And, and we want to see lecturers here going out to offer papers, to teach, eh, to get time. And I'm going to work very hard to see that permission for traveling that does not involve pub public funding is made easier for you. <laughs> because after all, Restrictions that you have in place is mostly for people who want to abuse public resources, but you have quite a number of professors here and the other you know, very famous. They will be invited at short notice to go as an external examiner and ask for permission and blee, 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 blee. Done. Permission was late. You cannot travel. Somebody is giving answer. Some of us, I know some professors who are chairpersons of international organizations, very prestigious there, and you don't want to frustrate them. We want them to travel. Go, work with other scientists in the world. We cannot close in. We cannot reach anywhere. Others are coming here to learn from us. Why can't we go out to learn from them? Right? So the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology is going to work very closely with you, Mr. Vice Chancellor, to try to minimize as much hard as we can to make sure that the working environment is good. And our hope is that everybody should be responsible. We're not going to do that somebody, somebody will go out boozing, you're not showing up in class. We'll kick you out. Right? We have disciplinary measures to do it. We're not doing it to, to do it if you don't maintain standards when you evaluate students. But as long as you teach and you publish, you want to make your life easier. And we should see more scientists staying at the university because their life is very good. They should go for other things because the passion drove them there. Yes, there are those who went there for passion. <laughs> Out of passion. But, but we want people to go there for passion. Not because economic life is too difficult at the university. Professors can make more money because you can apply for funding from different sources. And Costec is there. We'll see to it that they still get some more money. When you get some money, we're going to budget for money, especially the scientists in Tanzania. Yajayo eh? Yanafraisha, I can promise you. Uh, 
So therefore, I really want to congratulate you for all what I've seen, uh, Professor Liwa, for your leadership, and the, and the Balozi uh, Chair, for bringing this conference together and continuing collaboration with Sweden. And the, I think you told me about another collaboration that is in the offing, right? So we want to see universities doing that. Actually, to lessen the burden of the government. In a way, we still have a lot of competing needs for the government. We have hospitals to build, we have rural roads to construct, we have railway to construct. So if leadership of the university make it possible for professors to write proposals and attract funding to support us, we have to protect those professors and we have to protect the management of universities that will do that. And I think in that way, Professor Leo, you are showing the way. Thank you very much. Once again, I want to thank uh, our Swedish colleague for this, and please, my message to you, we still need scholarship. We need double degree, I was told, scholarship that you are initiating. We need full-funded scholarship that we can get. We need sandwich program that we can get. The only promise I can tell you, Tanzanians normally when they go abroad to study, they come back. I think we cannot stand winter. <laughs> So at some point we come back to, to, to Tanzanian summer. And I really want to wish you extremely productive uh, conference. So should I pompously now announce that the conference is officially open. Thank you so much.